to share with you. I haven't exactly shared this before in public, so brace yourselves, but uh, I have a bad case of epistemophilia. Epistemophilia. Now, philia is the love of, and episteme is knowledge. So indeed, I am a little bit obsessive uh, with wanting to learn, wanting to know. And that has led me down the path of becoming a university professor. But along the way, I have also had the pleasure, but also the passion for me search. So I'd like to share with you today some scenes from, well, my epistemophilia. So back when I was growing up as a young person in Kentucky, I really wanted to learn more about feminism. And it wasn't taught in school, so a group of us got together and we had a, a reading group. And to be honest, I'm not sure anymore what we read, except one book by a woman named Sark. A very exotic name, she actually was from California, but that was exotic to me in Kentucky. And Sark's book was called Eat Mangoes Naked. And it was about pleasure activism. It was about having pleasure in your own body, all on your own, figuring it out, what makes you happy, what makes you feel good. Now actually, I didn't like mangoes at the time, so that particular adventure that she was <laughs> prescribing wasn't really for me, but I learned from this book how to talk about what makes me feel good, but also how to talk about it with others. So I knew who I was, let's say, a little bit when I was in Kentucky, but I also wanted to know who would I be in the world? What kind of a person if I, it would I be if I went out there? So I convinced my parents to send me to an IB school, like many of you. Um, but this IB school was far away, not in Indiana, next door to Kentucky, but actually in India. And there I followed a wonderful curriculum, but also I joined a group led by one of the teachers, a wonderful woman named Malika, who brought together a, degruce, a very diverse group of students uh, to talk about gender and sexuality. And there I learned not everybody grew up a little Catholic person in Kentucky and had particular ideas about gender and sexuality fed into their head, but grew up with very different family backgrounds, sometimes not even being able to talk about sexuality other than heterosexuality, for instance. And we struggled together to really understand what was your experience um, when you were 13, when you got your period, all these sort of things. And I realized how important it was to just try and understand what somebody else's understanding of themselves was. So as I got a little older, um, I went to college. Now, maybe some of you are on, your, on the cusp of going to college. And I didn't want to join any particular program. I was going to do something different. I was going to do liberal arts. Okay, so it just basically means you have a, a rather interdisciplinary program. And so the first course, I was so excited, the first course I signed up for, because of course I'd come back to the US and I was feeling a, a bit of a foreigner in my own country. So it was called, How Can You Tell an American? How can you tell an American? Indeed, I wanted to know what sort of stories make an American? What sort of identifications or markers? And we learned a lot about the perspective of the African American experience, the Native American, and we learned about film and literature, about the civil rights struggle, and all kinds of liberation movements. Um, but what the three men that were organizing the course kind of forgot was to also include Billie Holiday and not just the Gershwin brothers. And so a group of us were a bit frustrated. We wanted to have women represented on the curriculum and so we went to them with our ideas, what could be added, and they said, oh girls, you can have a, a study group, 9 a.m. on Monday morning. And we were angry, but we learned that we can turn that anger into a critique, a feminist critique. And I've never forgotten that lesson as a teacher. You need to have different voices represented because then you know about a wide variety of experiences. So I was happy to be figuring out who I was, who I am, but I also wanted to know more about who I could be. And I realized I wasn't just learning that in the university. 
In fact, I was learning that from the groups that I was hanging out with, who were practicing drag, who were living their lives out loud and in color as queer people, who were taking matters into their own hands and transitioning so that they could be in the body that they wanted to be in. And what I learned from these sort of self-determination movements is that it isn't just about who you are, but about the wide variety of ways that you can experience with who you want to be. And that can also be unending. And so with this knowledge of transgender liberation, with this knowledge of what it means to have self-possession, of pleasure activism, of learning about difference of experience, about comparing things that you think are similar and just struggling to try and be understood amongst each other, I went deep into the field as a researcher of transgender studies. And there I've been trying to really understand not just my own experience, but how we are becoming in the space of a society and a culture that is also enveloped in change, right? We're all riding this kind of wave, this gulf, this momentum of constantly understanding gender, identity, race, and sexuality in new ways. And this has been a wonderful moment for me to be alive because I realized that there's plurality. There's not just men and women, but there's also non-binary people like myself. And now we have that language that's becoming more common every day in which I can speak my truth. So I ask people to call me they, and that fits for now. And I'm able to, as a media scholar, also see people like me represented in advertisements and, and comics and films. And so I'd like to end by asking all of you, the next time you see something that's a little bit confusing, you're not sure how to identify the gender or the sexuality, to see it possibly as something beautiful, but also as the start of your own epistemophilia. Thank you.